Number 8. Secret Underwater Alien Base Could a video of a mysterious object in the sky be evidence that aliens exist? A strange object seen flying through the clouds and then hovering motionless over Lake Erie is believed by some to be an alien craft. But could it be a scout ship that launched from an underwater alien base? A local philosopher and author of mysteries surrounding the Great Lakes in North America thinks so. Dr. Richard Souter believes an alien base sits at the bottom of the lake that borders both the United States and Canada. And if locals are to be believed, alien aircraft have been spotted in the area for years. Multiple records of saucer-shaped crafts, unnatural beams of light, and other strange phenomena have come out of the Lake Erie region from multiple sources, with more than 20 credible sightings over the last two years. One video filmed by locals shows multiple objects hovering over the lake before merging into one. But it's the video recorded by a father and son team that offers the best view of what looks like an alien ship. The video shows a massive aircraft hovering over the surface of the lake, with the water beneath it shimmering as though the extreme force from the ship was causing a disturbance. The area has been given the nickname of the Cursed Triangle because there have been so many sightings over the years. Ships, planes, and even people have disappeared there. So what is it about Lake Erie that makes it such a hotbed for UFO activity? Until someone is able to get closer to one of these ships or divers can investigate the lake bed, we can only watch and wonder where those strange lights in the sky are coming from. Number 7. The Bog Mummy More than 2,000 years ago, a man was buried in a peat bog in north-central Denmark. When his body was discovered in 1950, it was so well preserved that experts thought that he had been recently murdered instead of dying between 405 and 380 BCE. But when researchers finally removed his body and were able to get a closer look, they found out the shocking truth of his vicious death. A leather noose was still tied around his neck when scientists examined his remains, and archaeologists think he was a victim of human sacrifice, a fate he faced in order to ensure fertility. It's also possible that he was sacrificed as part of a supernatural belief that the bog was a portal to another world. Scientists can thank the peat bog where a tall man was found for his remarkable preservation. High acidity, low oxygen, and the cold environment of the Danish bog all helped to keep his body from decomposing, giving experts a wealth of information about the man and his way of life. He was so well preserved that his last meal of porridge and fish was still in his stomach. They also found he was infected with three kinds of parasites from contaminated water or undercooked meat. Even though Tolan Man is a remarkable find, he isn't the first bog body to have ever been unearthed. Across Britain and Northern Europe, over 500 bodies from the Iron Age have been found in peat bogs, made from layers of dead moss. Bog bodies are the result of a fascinating scientific phenomenon that naturally mummifies bodies, making their hair and skin turn a leathery color. Clothes, slaughtered animals, and weapons have also been found submerged in peat bogs, but the discovery of bog bodies gives us a look into the strange burial practices of centuries-old humans. 6. Decorative Viking Teeth The discovery of decapitated skeletons shocked road workers in Dorset, England, who accidentally unearthed a 1,000-year-old burial pit. When researchers analyzed the remains, they found strange carvings in the teeth of the deceased. Each of the skeletons had horizontal lines filed into their teeth, a process that would have been excruciating for the recipient. 54 bodies and 51 skulls of young, fit men were discovered in a pit near Weymouth, each with slash marks across their necks. Other brutal injuries included hands and bones with slice marks, and leg bones and rib cages piled separately from the rest of the bodies. Archaeologists think the remains belonged to Viking warriors, and some think they had their teeth filed this way to intimidate those they met in battle or to show off their status. The bodies were found near one of the oldest roads in England, known as the Ridgeway. It was used for thousands of years for ritual burials, long before the invaders were slaughtered by local Britons. At first, experts thought the Romans were to blame for the massacre, but radiocarbon dating pinpointed their arrival at around the 10th or early 11th centuries, which meant that the Vikings, who were considered a force to be reckoned with, suffered a devastating defeat in the village that saw their dead dismembered and buried in the pits. Why do you think the Vikings carved their teeth with these decorative lines? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Egypt's Severed Hands Most archaeologists working in Egypt expect to find priceless works of art, ancient statues, and the occasional mummy or two. 
But during a recent excavation trip, a team working near an ancient Egyptian palace at the ancient city of Avaris were in for a shock when they uncovered 16 severed hands. But that wasn't even the most fascinating thing. All the hands were unnaturally large, and only right hands were found. So was it for macabre reasons? Were the victims brutalized for having massive hands? Or was there something else going on 3,600 years ago that made someone remove several human right hands? To figure out the reason for the gruesome discovery, experts looked at ancient Egyptian art and writings to find their answers. Tales exist of soldiers cutting off the right hand of an enemy as a symbol of removing their strength permanently. This practice wasn't just for the sake of brutality. Any soldier who did the deed was said to receive a bounty of gold in exchange for their sacrifice. Most of the hands were located in a pit outside the palace grounds in modern-day Tel el Daba, but two were found in front of a throne room in an area that was controlled by invading Canaans who fought against the ruling Egyptian forces. So, were the hands gifted to the rulers by Egyptian soldiers seeking gold or their enemies? Only researchers can find out who they belong to. Until then, experts continue to study the remains and scour historical records to see if they can determine who were the victims of this brutal act. Number 4. Europe's Werewolf Trials We've all heard the stories of the witch trials that took hold of Salem, Massachusetts in 1692. But almost 200 years earlier, people on the other side of the world were persecuted for being vicious creatures. From the 15th to 17th centuries, European courts convicted men and some women of being werewolves, accusing them of mutilating and eating children. Like so many other cases of persecution, these werewolf trials started when superstition Religious beliefs and political clashes inspired people to look for scapegoats to explain the hardships they were facing. The scary thing is how similar these trials were to the persecutions in Salem for witchcraft. Those seen as outsiders were accused of consorting with the devil. They were blamed for everything from crop failures to infertility and impotence, and those who were accused of attacking children were rounded up and tortured until they confessed, without real evidence that any of these people were actual werewolves. Their accusers seemed to believe old folk tales of the mythological creature. For some reason, the people of the Middle Ages believed that animals wanted to consume them, and for whatever reason, they used that as an excuse to persecute their neighbors. Werewolf lore isn't only a modern thing. Stories of humans transforming into wolves goes as far back as 2100 BC. And there is even a Greek myth that Zeus was once fed human remains by King Lycaon, who Zeus later turned into a werewolf as punishment. When witch trials spread through Europe in the 1400s, Hundreds of men and women were convicted and hanged after being accused of ruining crops. Some were also blamed for mutilating cattle after transforming into wolves. In the French Alps, where real wolves often preyed on livestock, prosecutions continued, with villagers being accused of being werewolves by their neighbors. Citizens often armed themselves with clubs and pikes to find, hunt, and kill the accused. In France alone, up to 30,000 people were executed over a 100-year span showing how delusion and prejudice contributed to these unjust persecutions. What do you think inspired this mythological phenomenon across cultures? Tell us in the comments. Number 3. King Tut's Space Dagger In ancient Egypt, pharaohs were worshipped as godlike figures, and one powerful ruler's legendary dagger might have been made from an out-of-this-world material. King Tut's tomb was filled with countless treasures that archaeologists are still working to understand, but a recent examination by researchers might shed some light on the origin of a 13-inch blade that some researchers think was made from a meteorite. Using an X-ray scanner to study the object, a team from the Egyptian Museum in Cairo decided to examine the blade. It was found buried with Tut's body and has an embossed handle with a crystal pummel and a golden sheath with the head of a jackal, feathers and a floral pattern down the side. But it was the blade itself that gave researchers a thrill. The study confirmed that the iron dagger blade had high levels of nickel, cobalt, and phosphorus at levels that showed it had been crafted from a meteorite found in 2000 in the Egyptian city of Marsa Matra. Clues to the origin of the blade can be found in ancient hieroglyphics. Egyptians wrote of iron that fell from the sky, which experts now think means the ancient people not only knew about meteorites, but they used them to craft precious objects, including Tut's infamous dagger. The night sky the heavens and the cosmos were all important symbols in ancient Egyptian culture, so it made sense that King Tut's artisans would have gathered the remnants of a fallen meteorite and crafted a dagger from it. They would have considered it a gift from the gods, the very gods that not only gave Tut his power, but watched over every Egyptian and blessed them with fertile crops in the rich Nile River. King Tut played an important part in Egypt's history, becoming a pharaoh at only nine years old, 
and ruling until he died at the age of 19. When archaeologist Howard Carter discovered Tut's tomb in 1922, he found a treasure trove of jewelry, sculptures, ritual objects, and the famed space dagger that researchers now think has meteoritic origins. Number 2. Shang Dynasty Martyrs Many powerful cultures around the world asked the followers to show their devotion, but for China's Shang Dynasty, those who did so met a gruesome end. When experts set out to excavate the Yingzhu tomb, one of China's oldest and largest archaeological sites, they were stunned to find rows of bodies buried in tomb pits. As they worked to preserve the discovery, they found that more than 150 bodies had been buried there. As they continued to study the pits, they realized the site was a lot bigger than they originally thought. Almost 200 pits were uncovered, and up to 11,000 human skeletons were found. Corpses buried one on top of the other, stacked together or crisscrossed in piles. Even more startling, many of the bodies had been decapitated. As one of the earliest dynasties to rule China, the Shang brought in the Bronze Age from 1600 to 1046 BC. They were known for advancing mathematics, astronomy, artwork, and military technology. But this new discovery offered researchers a deeper look into the cost of living under the rule of the Shang dynasty. Bones unearthed at another site in the city of Anyang showed that prisoners of war were often used as slaves and later slaughtered. Sacrifice was common in their religion, but not all those who were killed were devotees. Sometimes large groups of slaves were killed simultaneously. With the king serving as a priest, he had authority over everyone in the kingdom, communicating with his ancestors for guidance and sending out hunting parties to round up primitive tribes he would later sacrifice. But the Shang dynasty couldn't last forever. Around 1046 BC, villagers rose up against King Di Jin. Tired of his brutal treatment and atrocious torture of people, they called for an end to his rule. An opposing army took advantage of the turmoil by rounding up nearly 200,000 slaves and along with the local army, they attacked. Many of Jin's soldiers refused to fight for him, and when some of his forces joined the other side to overthrow him, Jin committed suicide. It was a sad end to an oppressive leader, one whose influence can still be seen in the mass graves unearthed by researchers. But by finding the evidence of such atrocities, experts are able to understand the lasting effects of the dynasty and its brutal divisions. Number 1. Sacrificial Aztec Altar The discovery of an ancient subterranean altar in Mexico has revealed ties to a 16th century ritual that could have been the beginning of the Aztec civilization's downfall. It was discovered 13 feet beneath modern-day Mexico City, and among the trinkets and incense burners, experts found a giant clay jar filled with burned human remains. Attached to the altar, five chamber rooms and a kitchen with an ancient fire pit were also located. But it was the giant clay jar that gave experts a clue about the purpose of the altar room. Painted on the side of the vessel, the head of a water snake symbolizes the forces of the underworld. Now researchers think the human ashes inside might have been a sacrificial offering to Aztec gods. Thirteen incense burners were found surrounding the vessel, which was an important number in Aztec culture. Researchers from the National Institute for Anthropology and History in Mexico found the altar, and they think it is a relic of the Nahua people, an indigenous population of Middle America. When experts were able to date the objects, they realized they were left there about a century after Spaniards arrived in the era to conquer it. Along with the human remains, researchers now think the Nahua might have left the sacrifices there as one last hope of appeasing the god, who they thought was so angry he sent the Spanish to what is now Mexico to conquer it. It wasn't long after that that the Aztecs fell to the Spanish, and the land's indigenous people lost. Still, this discovery showed how the ancient culture used religious rites as a way to honor their past and fight to preserve their future. Thanks for watching. Which of these strange discoveries we covered today shocked you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like these. See you next time. Bye.